Wallace. And I have John Holling here with me. Three phases, dressage, cross country, show jump. And you're out on course and something's going wrong or going right. You know how to react to what they're doing. It was built originally to be a schooling facility and so everything's set up very conveniently. Welcome to the John and Rick Show, brought to you by Horse Trailer Pros, and we are really excited because we are here in Mayaca City, Florida at Terra Nova Equestrian Center, the future site of the CCI Four Star Long starting in 2023, but first we have the CCI Four Short in like two and a half, three weeks. Yeah, October 22nd, I think, and uh, this is our second time to Terra Nova. We were here a while back kind of brought you some of the highlights of the of the equestrian center. It's a really cool place. I know that you, there's some construction still going on, but we're sitting in front of the indoor or the covered and this place is beautiful. Yeah, it's it's incredible. Um, and we're going to get to go look around. We've got Mark Phillips coming up. We're going to get to right. interview Mark. Um, we actually also have Will Coleman, yeah. the winner of Aachen, um, right. who we're going to get to interview here in a little bit. Um, but yeah, you drive in this place, it is so impressive. And um, I, I've got horses coming, I know you guys have horses coming. I can't, I can't wait. I can't wait either. A lot of stuff happening since the last time we talked to everybody. Uh, we have some results. Yeah, so I think the first place maybe we want to start was actually just this past week and we were all up in Aiken right. at Stable, Stable View. View. And um, I know you guys had a bunch of horses we there. Had, we had seven in the FEI, which was pretty cool, two of ours. In their first time and then Elisa had one four star three three stars you had I had one of the three and one in the two, two and they were both very good yeah um, so yeah and you know I thought they did a good job I I will say my my only complaint which we were talking about with stable view was they had some rain early in the week and I think they thought that the footing was gonna be really really good because of all the rain but it dried out fast right um, so I wish that they had kept the irrigation going and the aeration going to make it just incredible because um, I thought the ground on cross country was a little bit firm right. but that said the rings are beautiful there the facility itself is fantastic um, well I agree with you I, I think there was some issues with some additional stabling that was there and I think I unfortunately was put into those stalls along with some other people I think they're gonna make some changes next right. time we come but you know, it was a large difference from the stabling that was offered to other people than to another four barns that didn't get that. My stabling was great. I don't know what your problem I know, is. <laughs> because you are who you are. I just, I'm nice to people. Yeah, so yeah. am I. Yeah, right. But uh, <laughs> all that being said, the, the event went off really, really well. I know we had, I think Phillip's on a roll. Yeah, Phillip is on a roll. So um, in the four short, Philip won it on Fernhill, Singapore. And then we had, Dom Shram, um, Bali Terre, he was second. And then, uh, of course, one of the John and Rick Show's favorites, Doug Payne, right. was third. And then uh, another one of the John and Rick Show's favorites, not that everybody isn't our favorite, but right. we also had Mr. Leslie Law in fourth and fifth. And then Carl Slesak from Canada rounded out the top six. six. That was great. Yeah. So, um, you know, I know. Um, it was uh, Mark Phillips' course, and of course we're going to be talking to Mark Phillips here because his courses are here. Yep. Um, but overall, I mean, the week, the week went pretty well. We, we had some ups and downs in our group, but, you know, it's always a learning experience that you learn from and move on. Um, so it was, it was fun. We had a good time. Everything was safe. I think there were safe rides. I don't think there was all that many falls, which was great to hear. Nobody got hurt. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, and you know, and again, just sort of talking about the weekend there, like I thought as far as the courses went, I thought Mark tried some different things. Um, the track started in a little different place. Right. Um, I do hope that they can, going forward, like I think one of the things that seems to be missing a lot from events that I've noticed recently is I don't know that I'd last time I've been to an event with like a proper coffin fence. Yeah, there's not one there. There's one that sets over to a side for a tunnel yep. area, which they used for the two star, I think last year. But I agree with you. Uh, and there was one in the backfield. I don't think they initiated this right. year. I just wonder 
I mean, you could actually ask Mark about that. I wonder if there's a trend for that or why why, you, why a coffin's going away. Yeah, it's going away. I mean, with lots of use of the mounds, and I actually thought for both the four star and the three star, they had. Um, like you ran up the mound, jumped a narrow on top, and then had to run down to some offset hedges to a corner. Right. Not that, that was a very good question. There was some really good stuff out there. Um, but it did seem, being, being fair, a little bit like he asked the same question several, several different times. times. Yeah. yeah. Um, which, you yeah. know what, the argument for that is you ask the question, show it to them a little bit easy a little early bit in the hard. course, and then make it a little more difficult as you go on. So I'm sure that's what he was thinking about. And to be fair, he actually did do that because at the end of the course, in both the three and the there four, there were really tough, there was really tough questions at the yeah, end, which yeah. you did get set up for early. Right, right. Big square oxers to a corner on the way out for both of those courses, and I thought that was actually quite influential at the right. end. Right. Well, it'll be interesting to see what he's done here for the four short. Absolutely. Um, in you know in the next three weeks, but we'll get to see that, right? Right. Um, one other thing that has happened recently was the European. Championships. Yeah, the European it looks like Great Britain did a great job. Again. Again. Yeah, they are just on the up. Yeah, so they had the top three places. You had Nicola Wilson. Um, oh, it just restarted itself. I think yeah. Piggy. Yeah, I was going to say Nicola and was on Sarah. JL Dublin, and then we had Piggy March on Brookfield Innocent, and Sarah Bullimore on Coro. Well, I'm sure I said that wrong. Uh, and then this guy named Michael Young was there just out of the medals. Yeah. Uh, and then Ingrid Klimko was there in fifth, and then Maxime in sixth uh, from France. So Very cool. That was very good, which meant that as far as the team competitions go, Great Britain won the gold again, because they won in Tokyo, right? Right. Um, and then you had Germany, and then Sweden was third. So um, it was obviously I think a great, great Britain just has a really good line of riders and horses right now, and it's all coming together yeah. really well. Um, They're pretty unbelievable. Yeah, and I think the good thing over in Europe is they are opening up more. I mean, Aachen just happened. That was in Germany. Um, and I think they're opening up more so things can happen there, uh, right. which is good. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, and speaking of things being opened up over there, like I said, we do have Will coming on. Yeah, and let me tell I, that interv the interviews were really good. Yeah. And... I've decided after that interview, because there's been interviews with Doug Payne, other people on this boot, that I'm gonna buy you. I want the boot. A boot. Yeah. I'm gonna buy you a boot, just like, so you can drink out of it. A, a, a drinking boot. A drinking boot. Yeah, I think that's a, you should. Do I you have you a boot should. fetish, or? I mean, I don't want an old dirty boot, is what I was trying to get <laughs> at here. I want a proper. Proper just, boot. Well, here's the thing. You're like, really intrigued by that. Have you ever drank out? You've drank out of the boot. No, but I no. feel like I'm missing something because here's the There's deal. Every, why don't you explain what, what happens in Aachen? Well, I don't know if it's just Aachen, but in Germany, or wherever, they have in this Germany. thing, I'm assuming, I don't know what the history of it is. And this is maybe where it comes from. Is like So for those who don't know, you, I, mean, I don't even know if you know this. I my original full last name is Boots. Is Von Hollinghausen. And it was shortened by like three, four generations ago. I like it. Yeah. And that is up in northern Germany is where that name comes from. Von Hollinghausen. Von Hollinghausen. So I feel like <laughs> I should know how to drink out of this thing. And I think if you do it wrong, it splashes you in the face and you look like a goof. So I need practice. So I think you have to twist the boot as you drink. Your full name would have been what? Jonathan Howard Von Hollinghausen. How's that for a mouthful, man? <laughs> I like it. Yeah. So, yeah, I feel like I need this boot. And... Also, if anybody's watching or listening, some instruction on how to drink out of the boot. Now, and what the boot history is, if somebody can give that to us. Yeah, I know I'm, Briggs over there is like a big history buff, but he can never tell me what the boot's about either. Briggs, we need some info on the boot, man. Um, I do know one thing that Will had said to us in the interview is he's pretty good at drinking out of the boot. Um, so maybe we can get with him and maybe, you know what we can do is like, let's get the boot. Joel, I think this is a great idea. We'll get the boot, and then we can have a little drinking competition on the show. We can do that, right? It's our show. It's our show. We can do whatever we want. We're PG. We're PG. We're not, we're not G. We're PG. Yeah. Maybe PG-13. I PG did 13. say fetish, so that might go PG-13. We're NC-17 now. Um, but yeah, no, I think we need to do no, that. No, we need to do that. But the interviews with Will were really good. I thought it was funny that you talk about the boot all the time. Will did say that his horse, off the cuff, is a really good drinker. 
and you were really funny because you said, oh yeah, he's Irish. Right, yeah, you're, giving away, a, you're giving away the whole interview. But that was about travel. So yeah, yeah I mean, it's a teaser, right? That's you right. tease. That's right, that's right, yeah. So stay around for the segments with Will and the segments well, after. Well, you won't even have to stick around long because. Because it's next. We're gonna take a little break right now. Right, well, yeah. Unless you have something else. I'm really excited about uh, the rest of the day. Yeah, so we're gonna take a quick break right now. When we come back, we're gonna catch up with Mr. Will Coleman, the winner of Aachen, and uh, see what he has to say. And then we're gonna come right back down here to Mayaca City, Florida, where we are gonna take you guys out. We're gonna talk to Captain Mark Phillips, the course designer, um, and then hopefully get a chance to just take a peek around yep. the place. It's gonna be the stressless um, segment, but also Horse Trailer Pros has moved to a new location out there, everybody. Make sure you go see it, take your trailers to them at the new location, it's amazing. Thanks Horse Trailer Pros for always being with us. Absolutely, let's go get that boot. Get it. Want to advertise on the John and Rick Show? Contact John at 352-875-8622 or call Rick at 850-879-2649. For a horse owner on the road, your trailer is essential. No one enjoys being stuck on the road. At Horse Trailer Pros, we repair, renovate, and maintain all makes and models of horse trailers. We work directly with your insurance company or manufacturer for warranty repairs and insurance claims. Our state-of-the-art facility provides quick turnaround and friendly customer service. Considering a living quarter conversion, we do those too. Find comfort on the road with Horse Trailer Pros. Call or text 352-804-2131. Horsetrailerpros.com. When it comes time to compete, I demand the best out of my horses and myself. That's why Elemental Fit Lab, the home of CrossFit Antics, is my home gym. Coach Vilma and her team create a fun, welcoming environment for athletes of all levels. Whether you're a beginner or a seasoned athlete, Elemental Fit Lab will guide you towards a stronger, healthier version of you. Mention the John and Rick Show to get three free personal training sessions with enrollment. You know who really loves horses? Kairos. That's short for chiropractor. My friends, Dr. Philip and Dr. Angela from Synchrony Chiropractic taught me that. And right now you can visit KairosLoveHorses.com. That's KairosLoveHorses.com. And mention the John and Rick show when you book for a special treat from these special docs. I now know horses need a chiropractor too. And the team over at KairosLoveHorses.com, that's KairosLoveHorses.com, have got their back. Again, check out KairosLoveHorses.com. That's KairosLoveHorses.com. Sweet Dixie South is an equestrian facility built for the lifestyle of the vendors of all levels. Whether you are coming to Ocala for the entire season, a week, a month, or a year, this beautiful 160-acre farm is the place to settle in and enjoy your time with horses. They offer a full cross-country course with two water features, banks, ditches, an amazing footing to gallop, a spectacular all-weather footing ring, large grass jumping fields, and dressage rings. Located in the rolling hills of North Marion County in Reddick, Florida, Sweet Dixie South has 100 stalls and numerous paddocks, apartments, a line of camper hookups, washer and dryer amenities, as well as common areas to complete your experience during your stay. Under the ownership of Mike Campbell and the management of Can Do Joe Adams at Top Rail Tack, Sweet Dixie South has transformed into a premier eventing training facility in Florida. Go to www.sweetdixiesouth.com for more information. Hey, Rick here. Do you have a horse suffering from poor performance, anxiety and fear, low appetite, agitation or nervousness? Stressless can help. Stressless, the hot horse remedy, is veterinarian developed, show safe, all natural formula that promotes calmness, focus and mood balance in horses experiencing stress related to training, showing, racing, stall rest and travel. This equine supplement encourages calmness, focus, and mood balance without affecting the motor skills or energy levels of your horse. It promotes a more willing and balanced temperament with no drowsiness or impaired function, resulting in increased focus, a calm mind, and a happier horse and rider. Try Stressless today and see for yourself why we think Stressless is the best hot horse remedy you will find. Check us out at centerlinedistribution.net and on Facebook and Instagram as Stressless Horse Supplement. 
Welcome back to the John and Rick Show brought to you by Horse Trailer Pros. And we are now in our stress less segment and really happy to be joined here by Mr. Will Coleman, who uh, is also the hotshot U.S. eventer right now. He is the man and just won Aachen. So, Will, first of all, congratulations. Thanks, John. Um, it's a fun week. Yeah, it was fun to watch. I can tell you that. It was pretty awesome. Yeah, it's it's an amazing event. Um, Aachen, Aachen is a, a spectacle unto its own, um, and it's it's always pretty special to be a part of it and to compete there. Um, this year was was obviously a little more special, but um, it was a great week, a great group of riders and horses, and just uh, I feel very blessed that that I was lucky enough to come out of there um, the winner. Yeah, well, um, I know we were all really proud of you for doing that. Um, and I want to get into sort of what the competition itself was about. But I thought really the thing that I found really interesting is you had been there previously, like really recently getting ready for the Olympics with the same horse, correct? That's right. Yeah, I was um, one of the alternates. Uh, the, the I think I was the last alternate that made the, the you know list to go to pre-export quarantine in Aachen. So I was a late addition to that travel squad. Um, but it was a really, I think, formative um, couple weeks for my horse there in July. It was nice to familiarize him with the venue and just really to focus on just that horse for a couple weeks. I actually think it put us on a good trajectory um, to go back then to Aachen in September. So it ended up being um, uh, a really important experience, I think, for us. And, um, you know, obviously, uh, it's never that easy to leave home for uh, weeks on end. But in this case, um, I do think it paid dividends. So just talk me through the timeline here so I get this right. So you went over in July and you were there for two weeks. So when did he get back home to the U.S. after that trip? So he left, I think I'm trying to remember dates exactly, but, um, you know, we basically left a week after the mandatory outing, the final um, sort of preparatory competition that they did for Tokyo. And we left about, I think, almost exactly a week later um, to go to Aachen. So that would have been maybe um, the 8th, 9th of July. And I was there until the 19th. I think my horse ended up getting delayed over there about an extra week so he was supposed to come home on the 18th or 19th but there was all sorts of flight trouble and he ended up getting stuck in belgium for an extra five days or something um and ended up i probably he probably by the time he got home it was probably um almost the end of july wow so like yeah that last last week of july okay and so then what he basically had like what four or five weeks at home uh, a little more than that. I, oh, six, I would say. Six, okay. Uh, yeah, he got and then home, had to, and then had to turn around and head back over to Aachen from, and about, at about six weeks after. That's a, that's a lot of travel, and I I don't say that like gosh, that's a lot of travel. I think it's just very interesting because we all get really worked up about, you know, putting our horses on trailers and driving from place to place. And I've always found it very interesting because, I could be wrong, but I always notice the jumper guys like they're willing to put their horses on a trailer and go to California and the next week come to Miami and fly them here and there to get to the events. And it seems like with the event horses, we're a little bit more worried about doing that. But obviously, you know, off the record did fine with with all of that traveling and did well. So you must have managed it very carefully and, and intelligently. Well, I think it starts with the fact that he's a good traveler. Um, he drinks incredibly well. And I think part of that is that he's uh, Irish. Well, maybe. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's a good drinker. Um, you know, we've we've used this um, Tad Coffins Theratry for the last couple of years on all horses that that travel, and I, I do think it seriously does contribute to them staying hydrated. So that played a played a role. But I think the horse is a good traveler. Um, he went with. Uh, our, our groom Haley Burlock was with him every step of the way, so I think that you know the horses do. I think 
um, respond to being around familiar people, especially ones that, that know them well and manage them well. So it was a team effort. Um, and, you know, despite the flight time, it's really not a terrible trip to Aachen. You know, you get there to Liege and you're only about an hour away from the venue. So the ground transport on the European side is pretty minimized. Um, you know, and I think as when you compare traveling event horses to traveling jumpers, I think the, the biggest difference is that, you know, their wind is so important to us. Um, right. And then the jumpers, oh, while it plays a factor, it's nowhere near as critical as, um, you know, horses that have to go and gallop for, you know, minutes on end. So, um, yeah, it wasn't ideal. I wouldn't have drawn it up that way, but I think, you know, we tried to make uh, the best of the situation and, and I think we did. Yeah, I'd, I'd say you made the best of the situation. Yeah, Rick, what do you got? I was going to say it works because I believe on on uh, the record for what has been done, you're the first U.S. writer to win off. Is that correct? Yeah, that's that's true. Um, you know, it's Aachen has only been running the eventing for since 2007 after the WEG, so it's it's been around a while, but it's still a relatively um, compared to, you know, the dressage and jumping, which have been going there since, um, geez, I don't know, the beginning of the 20th century. Um, I think it's still a relatively, you know, new addition to Aachen, but it's still a, a very decorated tradition. And uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. I mean, to be the first American on the board is, is an amazing thing, but um, I'm humbled by it more than anything. Um, because I have such respect for the other names on the wall and, and for what the event and Aachen means to basically everybody that competes horses. I don't care what discipline you're in. It is sort of the, the ultimate. So that part of it is really cool for me because Aachen is just in a very special place to me as a horseman. Absolutely. And so I haven't been to Aachen. I've seen um, some of the competition. Does it compare to anything that you've been to here in the U S I mean, you've been, obviously we've got Tryon, we've got WEC, we've got the Kentucky Horse Park. Like, mm -hmm. what's the venue actually like? Um, it doesn't compare to anything we have here. And that's no, not to denigrate some of the incredible venues that we have. All the ones you mentioned are phenomenal. Um, I would say WEC, just in terms of scale, maybe can get close eventually, but you know, a normal year in Aachen, they get 350,000 people through the gates and it's 350,000 very knowledgeable horse enthusiasts. Right. Um, they're not the shopping and all the stuff that they have there, you know, on the margins is not what brings them there. They come there for horse sport. And that part of it is kind of cool. Just the fact that um, that many people and that whole venue is really all about sport and all about our sports. I think that's cool and that's unique. Um, the stadium itself, I think it seats 70,000 people. I mean, wow. it's, it's, like a, it's like the biggest football stadium you've been in. And um, the field and the, the main arena there, um, it is so massive, it, it's hard to describe. I mean, it, it is like, uh, I think it's like five football fields um, in terms of its dimensions. It's just massive. Um, and I think you're, you're in the warmups and you're in the, the going around the, the venue there and, uh, you know, you're riding next to Isabel Worth or Scott Brash or Daniel Will Coleman. Well, out like <laughs> small, small fish in that pond. And, uh, I don't think cool. you, I, I hold on. I don't think you can say that anymore. Once your name's on the wall, yeah, you're maybe. a big fish. Sorry, dude. <laughs> well, I, I don't see myself that way. I, I, I just genuinely I'm such a fan of of horses and, and all the disciplines that for me, it's 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 very cool to be around all those people. And one of the harder things for me during the week is to not um, want to watch too much. Like I have to make myself go and take naps and rest and, you know, make sure that I'm totally focused on what I'm doing um because i'm a little bit i'm such a fan I, I could watch if i wasn't riding i'd be there from sun up to sundown all day every day and i never take my eyes off any of the rings they're just well I, so I, I i think that's probably a lesson for all of us to learn is you know it's got to be if you're going to do this it's got to be your passion for sure um so listen we're going to take a quick break 
And then I want to come back and I want to talk about your ride and how off the record felt through all the phases and have you kind of break it down for us if you're willing to do that. Sure. All right. So uh, big thank you to Stress Less from Rick and I. Um, this was our Stress Less segment. It is a great supplement. If you have horses that need to focus and deal with the stress of competition, it doesn't dull them. It doesn't make them lazy, um, but it does just take the edge off and get them really focused. So Will, the next time you go over to Aachen, you know, maybe that'll get you for win number two next year. That'd be nice. Yeah, anything. Right. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm John Holling, and this is my wife, Jen, and we run Holling Eventing out of Willow Run Farm here in Ocala, Florida. We love our Jump for Joy jumps. We are standing in front of one of my favorites, which is our Jump for Joy angled brush, which we have up on our bank complex, so we can prepare the horses for the three days that are coming up. And it is very mobile, and we can put it anywhere we need to get the horses the questions that they need to see before we go and compete. So we love them for cross country. We also have them in our show jump ring. They're great, you never have to paint them. Maintenance is super easy. And uh, like Jen was saying, the shoulder brush here um, and any of the portable cross country jumps that Jump for Joy makes are great. They're easy to move around, change the courses, we love them. You can put them in the water jump, you can put them anywhere you want. So if you're looking for some new show jumps, some new cross country jumps, check out Jump for Joy. Hey, Rick here. Do you have a horse suffering from poor performance, anxiety and fear, low appetite, agitation or nervousness? Stressless can help. Stressless, the hot horse remedy, is veterinarian developed, show safe, all natural formula that promotes calmness, focus and mood balance in horses experiencing stress related to training, showing, racing, stall rest and travel. This equine supplement encourages calmness, focus, and mood balance without affecting the motor skills or energy levels of your horse. It promotes a more willing and balanced temperament with no drowsiness or impaired function, resulting in increased focus, a calm mind, and a happier horse and rider. Try Stressless today and see for yourself why we think Stressless is the best hot horse remedy you will find. Check us out at centerlinedistribution.net and on Facebook and Instagram as Stressless Horse Supplement. Welcome to Terranova Equestrian Center. Located in Mayaca City, Florida, just a short drive from some of the nation's top beaches. As a competitor, one of the most important things we look for when planning our competition calendar is the quality of course design and footing for our beloved equine athletes. We are so excited to host our inaugural event, the Event of Terra Nova, this fall. This event was thoughtfully created by some of the most innovative and experienced minds in our sport. The courses are run over gorgeous terrain, and we are proud to offer custom drainage and irrigation throughout all levels of competition. Terra Nova is certainly the gold standard, with six Wordley Martin GGT arenas, and a Captain Mark Phillips designed and Eric Bull built cross country course, complete with frangible technology. We hope to create a special experience for all levels of riders. Whether you're experiencing your first horse show or are a seasoned Olympic athlete, Terra Nova is excited to welcome you. Summit Joint Performance, the injectable joint supplement used by numerous international and Olympic riders, invites you to experience the winning Summit Difference. Made of all natural ingredients, Summit increases mobility and comfort. Win your class with Summit Joint Performance. Grant Showalter has over 15 years of equine bodywork and saddle fitting experience. His technique uses manual pressure and stretching to release points of restriction, leading to freer movement, reduce soreness, and restored range of motion. He has a thorough understanding of the importance of a properly fitted saddle. You can quickly identify and correct any balance issues and can adjust your saddle on site. I personally have Grant work on all of my event horses to keep them feeling their best before, during, and after their competitions. Grant is based in Florida year-round, but regularly travels to Georgia, Tennessee, and the surrounding areas. For more information or to schedule an appointment, call 484-639-4454.
Welcome back to John and Rick show. We are still joined by Will Coleman, the winner of Hawken this year, which we're all super proud about. Uh, Will, I know we wanted to go into the experience of Hawken itself, how you prepped for the dressage on onwards to show jump and then to the um, cross country. Tell us what it was like getting your horse ready and going in the dressage ring there at Aachen. Uh, well, I mean, it's not unlike any of the other tests that you do in your life, I guess. Um, you have to listen to your horse, got to go through your sort of whatever routines and, you know, whatever your plans are for getting that horse to his perform his best. That's sort of what you stick to. It's not anything different. Um, right. this year was a little different in Aachen. We did our dressage actually in the grass, um, which, uh, you know, nowadays in the States, we don't do a lot of dressage on grass. We're pretty lucky. We have all weather rings at a lot of our venues, but it was Aachen grass is, is not like the grass that we would normally ride on. It's, um, it's quite possibly the most perfect surface you could possibly do dressage on. Um, so it was, it was, you know, like any other event, um, just at Aachen. Um, you know, my, my horse was good. I, I think with him in general, uh, he's a horse that does try very hard. And uh, sometimes he can give you, um, in the process of trying very hard, he can get a little bit tight and a little bit um, sort of anxious. And uh, I tried to stay really cool and, and just try to slowly build him up throughout my warm up. And I think I did a pretty good job of that. Um, and when I went into the ring, I didn't maybe go all out. I just tried to execute a really clean test and give away as few marks as possible. And, um, you know, it was a solid test. They weren't super generous with marks there in Aachen in general, but I was pleased with how he went and I thought uh, set us out for you know, the rest of the weekend. So, uh, so all the listeners and, and people watching know, what, 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 what was your score um, after dressage? Uh, 29. And you were competitive. Were you in the top 10 with that? Yes. Uh, close to it. I, I'll be honest. I, I didn't look at the scoreboard once all weekend. Um, wow. Is that you? normal? So, yeah, that is pretty normal for me. Um, right. You know, I, uh, I don't think it helps me really um, to know where other people are. You know, basically, it's not like I go into the show jumping ever saying oh i've got a rail in hand you, know, you want to jump clear around and uh right. you are the same on the cross country like in this case you I was part of the nation's cup team and we needed a fast round and i was gonna go for it so um it just i don't really think that knowing those things for me is, is in any way is that helpful but i didn't think about it any differently here i just went and tried to ride my horse the best i could every phase period so yeah, I don't and know obvious the dressage. I don't know where I was after the cross country. <laughs> uh, I just know where I was at the end. That's it. Yeah, you were first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was. Yeah, <laughs> you knew then. Well, Dad, you talk yeah. about the show jump. How was the show jump? I mean, obviously, you went out there with a double clear round. Um, yeah. How how did it ride for you? Was it a, was it a technical course? How how did it ride? Well, you know, in that main stadium in Aachen, it's it's like I mentioned earlier. It's so bloody big that the and the time is always really really tight so you know for my horse who gets a little bit out of shape sometimes if he starts getting a little quick um then he could get a little hard in his body and it can be sometimes a little bit more difficult to jump clear at a place like Aachen to be honest like it's not an ideal um scenario for him he's better jumps a little better if I can keep it a little slower and a little bit use maybe a tighter turn or something to get time but you can't do that in Aachen you have to go so it wasn't an ideal course I don't think he jumped the greatest round he's ever jumped in his entire life um we managed to keep the rails up but he you know started okay and then as that kind of quicker pace carried through the kind of last third of the course I thought he was starting to come undone um but thankfully uh he kept trying he's, he stayed careful I gave him as much help as I could uh, and we, we kept them up. Um, I think I had a good plan for the course and, uh, I had a decent warm up, So all that was fine. Um, you know, it was interesting watching a, a lot of horses really struggle in that arena in Aachen. It's so big this year was different because it was actually under the lights, which, 
um, puts some funny reflections and can create some shadow issues. Um, but in general, the horses just go into that arena and I don't care if you've jumped Kentucky, Tryon, WEC, there's very little that can feel like ah, can, um, and it's just something about it. I think it's just, um, especially with the lights on, there are a lot of end horses that look like they had, you know, um, dirty underpants, um, going into there. And, uh, you know, my horse even, who's not spring chicken, he, he also felt like, you know, he almost greened up a little bit on me, you know, he emptied out a little bit, and, um, made the jumps feel a little bit bigger than they should have. Um, like I had to help him a lot more than I would normally, but, um, you know, he kept trying and, you know, we, we managed to clear around, but it, it rode difficult. It wasn't an easy course. And, and Aachen just makes everything a little bit harder just because of the atmosphere and the venue. Sure. Hey, John, ask him about the cross country. Yeah. So I've been told the cross country there is really difficult. It's hard to get the time. Um, and it's like, it just keeps coming at you pretty quickly. So, um, you know, we, I'm just sort of curious one, how it walked and then how it compared when you wrote it. Um, I mean, obviously it's Aachen, so it's no joke. So what was, what was the cross country like? Well, I would say in general, Aachen, it's not the biggest cross country course you've ever seen, but it's very technical. And if you have intentions on going after the time, um, it is like seven minutes with a gun to your head. It is just flat out. And, um, you know, when you're going at speed like that over a technical course, that requires like a nimble horse, a horse that can turn well, read lines quickly. Um, you know, you kind of, if you, if you want to have any chance at the time, you can't have an extra stride around the whole thing. Um, and uh, so it, it walked like it was going to be like that. I mean, it was just, um, it was like seven minutes um, just flat to the boards. And uh my horse happens to kind of like going like that. I mean, he's a bit of a, a bulldog out there on the cross country. And actually he sort of likes, you know, going out of the box aggressive. And so in a, in a way it suited him. And, and that's part of, I think, why we wanted to take him there. I thought it would suit him, um, but it rode to plan. It was just, the time was incredibly tight. And um, I'm annoyed that we had a couple seconds because I think one second, less i think we would have won the, the nation's cup as well which would have been really cool um, it would have been cool but i'm not sure that falls on the guy that won it um, certainly one of the other guys could have been one second well, faster I, or, or left to pull up we, as well i was i was the last guy to go and yeah. you know we, we we win as a team we lose as a team and uh i felt bad because one second surely there was a place where i could have maybe saved a second and uh i think for the sake of my teammates and all the people that were there supporting us, it would have been really amazing. And, um, you know, it's motivation to go back. Um, Hans Meltzer supposedly told Eric, our coach, um, for us to enjoy Aachen this time because it's never going to happen again. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. Challenge accepted as far That's as that. That's awesome. Um, but, you know, I think that's what Aachen means to, to, to those guys and to every team that goes there. And to think that we were one second away from, from winning it is just uh, gutting. But not to be upset about it, I think we can be really proud of a lot of things. But um, it just goes to show you how competitive it is and how much people really care about it. And, uh, you know, I think it's a great opportunity for us to practice kind of championship level performances at – you know, really a, a venue that is uh, nothing short of what you see at an Olympics or a world championships. And in some ways it's even more so because it's only the best that are there. And uh, it's the very top of, of all the disciplines. So we've got like a minute left here and I just want to know one, one serious question and then one really serious question if I can, Rick. Um, but first, Briefly, are you taking off the record to Maryland to the five star? What's the plan with him? No, I'm not. I, you know, we talked about how much he's traveled the last couple months. And um, I think he's the kind of horse that probably um, just is a little mentally kind of, I think, at his end. Um, 
and he did a, his first five star at Kentucky this spring. And that was a lot for him. And I think um, I, he's earned, I think a little break now, and then we'll kind of get him back to work a little sooner and, and get ready for Kentucky again next spring. Um, you know, That'd be good most- because you won Aachen. So we'd like you now to see if we could get an American to win Kentucky. So let's go do that. Well, yeah, we, we've been closer the last few years. Boyd's That's had right. some very, very close calls. Um, but uh, yeah, I think we'll, uh, we'll aim at Kentucky as we all, you know, you and I and everybody does and, and just try to you know, put our best foot forward there, hopefully. That's right. Let's get it. Um, and then the last really serious question I have, which I ask everybody who went to Aachen this year, um, did you get to drink out of the big boot and figure that out without splashing beer all over your face? I, you know, the boot was not on offer. I don't know if that's a COVID casualty, but um, <sighs> we did not sample the boot this time, but I'll have you know that I've drunk from the boot several times in my life. And so you're, uh, <laughs> you're, you're good at the boot. Got it sorted. You got All right. Turn. So if we ever have like a drinking competition with the Germans and the boot is involved, you're the guy we call. Well, you know, if you're going to drink with the Germans, we got to train. It's kind of like beating the Germans at horses. It's pretty right? hard. You right. got to be pretty, you got to be pretty practiced. Um, I train pretty hard. So I just need the boot. And I think we I, can do this. I, 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 you have the talent, John. I, I believe. <laughs> and, uh, I think, uh, yeah. I think let's let's try to to go back there, and we'll 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 conquer both both worlds. The Maybe we'll training. do the boot part like on the Monday after the competition is probably the best time for that. Uh, yeah, that's that's a definitely post competition activity. Right, right. All right, Rick. You got anything else? No, I just want to say, Will, congratulations. We're super proud of you and your horse, and 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 the team. They did a great job, and, and I know, like you said before, it was gut, I, it was gutting that you were .3 out of the lead, but you know what? Y'all did a great job. You represented the United States, and we appreciate it. Yeah, it, it was a great great group. I honestly uh, can't say enough about all the riders that were there. They just um, – it was, it was a lot of fun. I think everybody would say that. It was just a really fun week, good group. Yeah, well, I think we were all proud of you and the entire U.S. team did an amazing job bringing that silver medal home. So well done, USA, and well done, Will. Thank you for joining us. And now we're going to take a quick break, and we come back. We are going to be down at Terra Nova, and we're going to catch up with uh, Captain Mark Phillips. So make sure everybody checks back in for that. The holidays may seem far away, but they're really just around the corner. If you're looking for a heartwarming and custom gift to give this year, consider commissioning a piece by Tegan Henderson at Creature Feature Portraits. Choose between glasses or canvas to immortalize your beloved horses and pets. Creature Feature Portraits provides affordable and classy artwork for you and your home. Find Tegan on Instagram at creature underscore feature underscore portraits. And to inquire about commissions and pricing, text her at 774-278-1492. For a horse owner on the road, your trailer is essential. No one enjoys being stuck on the road. At Horse Trailer Pros, we repair, renovate, and maintain all makes and models of horse trailers. We work directly with your insurance company or manufacturer for warranty repairs and insurance claims. Our state-of-the-art facility provides quick turnaround and friendly customer service. Considering a living quarter conversion, we do those too. Find comfort on the road with Horse Trailer Pros. Call or text 352-804-2131. Horsetrailerpros.com. Deco Pony has specialized in making striking, durable, and affordable custom show and barn accessories for a decade. Our exclusive line of custom products has allowed us to create hundreds of beautiful aisles for riders across the globe. Let us make your dream barn aisle a reality with our custom stall guards, halter guards, wrap holders, and stall plaques. Deco Pony is the exclusive online retailer for QHP Tack in Holland, making it easy to complete your look. Follow Deco Pony on Instagram for all the latest. Hey, Rick here. Do you have a horse suffering from poor performance, anxiety and fear, low appetite, agitation, or nervousness? Stress Less can help. Stress Less, the hot horse remedy, is veterinarian developed, show safe, all natural formula that promotes calmness, focus, and mood balance in horses experiencing stress related to training, showing, racing, stall rest, and travel. 
This equine supplement encourages calmness, focus, and mood balance without affecting the motor skills or energy levels of your horse. It promotes a more willing and balanced temperament with no drowsiness or impaired function, resulting in increased focus, a calm mind, and a happier horse and rider. Try Stress Less today and see for yourself why we think Stress Less is the best hot horse remedy you will find. Check us out at centerlinedistribution.net and on Facebook and Instagram as Stressless Horse Supplement. Summit Joint Performance, the injectable joint supplement used by numerous international and Olympic riders, invites you to experience the winning Summit difference. Made of all natural ingredients, Summit increases mobility and comfort. Win your class with Summit Joint Performance. Welcome back to the John and Rick Show, and we are out here on the cross-country course at Terra Nova, and fortunate enough to be joined by course designer, Captain Mark Phillips. Mark, thanks so much for taking the time. Uh, I know you're busy today, for sure. Well, it hasn't been my quietest day of the year, or quietest couple of days. We've got, um, I don't know, must be 200 fences out here, so there's a lot to do. Um, and you just got back from Stableview. Um, where you were the course designer up there. And so you obviously, like you said, you have a lot going on. Um, just before we even get into here at Terra Nova, just stable view, obviously, it was a big competition. Um, Philip had a good run around it. How did that course ride, in your opinion, compared to what you set out there? Well, you obviously didn't see Philip jump the intermediate fence backwards. <laughs> I, yeah, the one, sea of clouds. <laughs> but apart from that, uh, he had a good go on, um, on the Singapore horse. Uh, <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, I think um, stable view is slowly coming of age. The the footing there gets better now, year by year, month by month. Um, I think it's probably the best footing we've ever ever had there, and uh, you know, and we've got a good inventory of fences, so we can keep ringing the changes. So um, yeah, I think stable view is is coming of age. It's been um, was it now seven years. You know, we've looked around. Rick has been here once before, and um, I've looked around today, and this place seems absolutely incredible. Um, and so we've got the four short coming up, which is, I think, the division that was kind of added in on you. Um, and so you've got a whole team here, everybody getting this all set. So how many guys, realistically, taking away, like, all the people building rings and all that, how many people does it take for you to get something like this set, to get these fences out? And how many days, I know you got here yesterday, um, how many days do you set aside to actually set this course? <laughs> well, the actual setting, um, t yesterday, today, and uh, and tomorrow morning, um, because I think we're nearly there now, but I'll need to do all the maps uh, t tomorrow morning just to check the efforts against the, the distances. Um, <clears throat> but the, in the planning, um, <laughs> I, c I can't remember how many times I've been here, but I was here in, um, in the spring, May, June time when that advanced loop was dry and acceptable, but now it's, now it's not. Um, then I was here before that because, you know, the, the water jump has been in now for over a year, the steps, the banks, the ditches have all been in uh, uh, over a year because you need that time for the ground to settle either side and forget a, a good uh, grass ward established for takeoff and landing. So, um, yeah, it's, it's probably been two years to get to here. But uh, the big advantage here is they have a great watering system. You've got the Florida sunshine. And therefore, the, we're able to get to where we want to get quicker than in some other parts of, of the US. Um, but we're still um, dealing with the pigs. Now, the pigs come in out of the swamp and uh, cause havoc on the f footing in pl places. So actually, that's a great question. So my son really wants to hunt. And if there's pigs down here, maybe I could bring him down for the event. I'm not a big hunter, but I bet you are. You could take my kid hunting. What do you think? <coughs> I know how I do it, whether it's strictly legal or not. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm pretty sure with the with the hogs, you can let like those boar. You can do anything you want. <laughs> so that, so if, if you can bait them with a bit of corn, uh, I, I can show him where to go and sit. Yeah. Perfect. I'm going to let him know. He'll be thrilled. 
So the pigs come out and they kind of destroy the footing a little bit? Is that what they do? They just dig holes. Yeah. They're rooting around. And so you've got a nice turf and all the turf gets turned right. upside down in sort of you know, meter square patches. And uh, you, know, you think you've got a perfect approach to a fence and suddenly there's a hole in front of it. So you've got to move the fence. You move know? it and fix it. Now, I was here uh, several months ago, and it has changed immensely since I was here with the, with the grass and the footing and the irrigation. And I think it's, to me, and I know we're, you're working on flat topography, right? And designing the course without any kind of adulations or anything. But the irrigation itself for the footing, like you were talking about, is going to really lead to a, a pretty good, quick course, don't you think? Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Of, of course. <laughs> We can control the footing here with ir irrigation, right? But last week we had ten but inches of rain you here can't control in, that. in two days, and that's a problem because uh, I'm not a great expert on this black soil. Right. The sand and the clay we sort of know how to deal with in various parts of the world. Um, the problem here is the water comes out of the swamp from sideways. Right. It, it, it doesn't come from up there, and it doesn't come from down there. It comes at you sideways, sideways. Out, out of the swamp, and when it keeps coming and keeps coming and the water level rises, I'm not actually sure how much you can do about it. You know? right. it's, it's, uh, um, but uh, that's why we've changed the, that last 800 meters of the advanced track um, onto good dry land. And you know, if it doesn't rain between now and, and the next three weeks before the event, we put the rain gun on it and we've got perfect footing. Right. That's the, but what I don't want is some hurricane to come through on the Monday of the event. <laughs> right, well, we're gonna ward that off. So, but I do know, I know I've looked around and Sarah's shown us around a lot and there's, there is really some holding um, ponds and they do have some canals. And obviously the one area that really wasn't worked on before that, that you thought was gonna be your loop, but the others didn't get affected, that something is working right here with, with what they got, right? Uh, no, absolutely. I mean, uh, um, I'm not saying you could have five inches of rain one day and right. run the next day. No, but, but I but think the, that's anywhere. The, the, uh, this footing that we're, we're standing on and, and the rest of the course is, um, yeah, what well, you can see for yourself, it's, 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 it's great amazing. footing. I, I think people are going to be thrilled. Um, it's amazing how the grass has, has, has improved over the last 12 months. Yeah. You know, sunshine and water and a mowing machine. Um, <laughs> right. Those are the sort of key, key ingredients when you're trying to develop a sward. Plus, there's got to be a little bit of chemistry involved as well to make sure you've got the right pH. And, sure. and uh, But they've had an agronomist here uh, check, checking it all out. And there were one or two places where the pH wasn't as good as it should have been. Right. But that's all been corrected. You know, and going down the road, you'll see still there's one or two low, wet areas that we were planning to use but they're too wet um, but that's part of the learning curve on a, on a new site and you know part of the, uh, the the job list between now and next year uh, to try to improve those areas because uh, when you've just got a small patch that's 10 meters by 10 meters it's not so difficult to improve it sure. when you're trying to improve 100 acres that's a bit, that's of a, more, that's bit, a bit more of a problem <laughs> which it sounds like from talking with Sarah that you guys have done some of that, the big improvements as well. She was saying a lot of these areas have actually, like, when they've dug ponds or moved stuff, they've actually backfilled in and lifted the, the track. All this perfect footing that you're looking at now was not perfect 18 months ago. Um, there was low areas, but they've, they've brought sand in, they've topsoil, sod on the top, whatever. So it wasn't always as perfect as what it looks now. And this area here... Um, was, was yeah was, was like that right <laughs> um, in terms of the trees but it was just a jungle of of, of oh, you don't have brambles here but Close the, our it. equivalent of brambles <laughs> your, your, yeah and but no all that um, undergrowth has been cleared and left with the beautiful site you, you're looking at now so you've got one more day here after today to get things set. You said you're pretty much there. Then do you head back home and then come back over for the competition? What's your, what's your plan between now and the actual running of the event? Yeah, I go home tomorrow night um, for <laughs> a couple of weeks. I'm going to come back to, to Fair Hill um, because I want to see what Scotty's doing with the, at the Five Star, wearing my Five Star <laughs> course design hat, uh, but also to see my, um, my daughter riding, Zara. 
I probably should have put that the other way around. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe do that. Re- restart. <laughs> um, <clears throat> then I come on here for the, for this event, um, and then um, right after the Monday after this event, I go and do the four long, three long, th- uh, four short, whatever, a try on, uh, ready for the middle of November. So you're really enjoying your retirement, which is good, and slowing down a lot is what I've noticed here. So well done. Congratulations to you on that. Yeah, my body's feeling it a bit, but <laughs> every, every day I, my body reminds me I'm not as young as I'd like to think I, I, I am, but um, I've been lucky. Uh, I've been able to travel during COVID and go backwards and forwards to the U.S., which is not an easy thing to uh, achieve, but the the, um, the USCF and <coughs> the USOC have given me that, that waiver. And that's kept me busy all through all through COVID, which, um, yeah, I'm one of the lucky ones. Well, listen, Mark, we really appreciate it. I'm glad that you've been uh, doing well and getting to travel around and keep all of these events going for all of us here and, uh, and obviously around the world. So, um, again, thank you for taking the time with Rick and I to sort of talk us through everything. And I can't wait to be out here and jump around your course in about two and a half weeks. Well, let's just hope we have a safe and su- successful weekend. Absolutely. So thank you very much. We'll be right back. Higher Standards Leather Care brings joy to a chore that every rider, whether Western or English, competition or trail, has to do. Clean and care for our tack. The saddle soap comes in four scents, all named after beloved horses. Ben's Rosemary Mint, Buzz's Citrus Ginger, Fox's Vanilla Lavender, and Woody's Confidence. For those who prefer a fragrance-free soap, Plain Bay is our unscented option. Our leather balm is a rich conditioner and, like the soap, is all handmade in small batches. Find us at hsleathercare.com to order direct or to find out if your favorite tack store is one of our retailers. Grant Showalter has over 15 years of equine bodywork and saddle fitting experience. His technique uses manual pressure and stretching to release points of restriction, leading to freer movement, reduced soreness, and restored range of motion. He has a thorough understanding of the importance of a properly fitted saddle. You can quickly identify and correct any balance issues and can adjust your saddle on site. I personally have Grant work on all of my event horses to keep them feeling their best before, during, and after their competitions. Grant is based in Florida year-round, but regularly travels to Georgia, Tennessee, and the surrounding areas. For more information or to schedule an appointment, call 484-639-4454. Hi, I'm Liz Halliday-Sharp. I'm an international event rider based in Ocala, Florida, and Lexington, Kentucky. We love our Jump for Joy jumps. We're able to take the fillers and portables with us back and forth between our two locations, which is really helpful. And we especially love the cross-country portable fences. We have lots of different ones so that we can bring them between Lexington and Ocala, and we've always got something exciting for the horses to learn and jump over. We love our fences, and we would recommend Jump for Joy to anybody. When it comes time to compete, I demand the best out of my horses and myself. That's why Elemental Fit Lab, the home of CrossFit Antics, is my home gym. Coach Vilma and her team create a fun, welcoming environment for athletes of all levels. Whether you're a beginner or a seasoned athlete, Elemental Fit Lab will guide you towards a stronger, healthier version of you. Mention the John and Rick Show to get three free personal training sessions with enrollment. Sweet Dixie South is an equestrian facility built for the lifestyle of the vendors of all levels. Whether you are coming to Ocala for the entire season, a week, a month, or a year, this beautiful 160-acre farm is the place to settle in and enjoy your time with horses. They offer a full cross-country course with two water features, banks, ditches, an amazing footing to gallop, a spectacular all-weather footing ring, large grass jumping fields, and dressage rings. Located in the rolling hills of North Marion County in Reddick, Florida, Sweet Dixie South has 100 stalls and numerous paddocks, apartments, a line of camper hookups, washer and dryer amenities, as well as common areas to complete your experience during your stay. Under the ownership of Mike Campbell and the management of Can Do Joe Adams at Top Rail Tack, Sweet Dixie South has transformed into a premier eventing training facility in Florida. Go to www.sweetdixiesouth.com for more information. Welcome back to the John and Rick Show, brought to you by Horse Trailer Pros, and we're at the beautiful Terranova Equestrian Center in Mayaca City, Florida, just outside the beautiful beaches of Sarasota, correct? Yes. And we are joined by Hannah and Zach Kettlebeater. Hannah, would you bring us into focus of what's going on here, what's getting ready to happen? 
So we're getting ready for our first event, which we spoke about last time you were here. Right. And there's been a lot of progress since you guys were last here. Definitely a lot of progress. And we're really excited. It's coming up in a couple of weeks, so everyone get their entries in. Exactly. When's closing date? Um, October 5th, but then, you know, we're going to do post entries. Post entries but, but, but Hannah, you got to tell everybody out there, post entries cost you money. Yes, I know. So you might as well get in early well. <laughs> and because you should be coming here because there's prize money across the board from starter all the way to the four star. And I think that's really a really great thing to do. And I think also live streaming is happening all across the board. Yes, live streaming across the board. And there'll be clips of your ride from the live streaming on the Equestrian Digital app. Wow. So I can watch myself? You can. Sweet, <laughs> I love to watch me. <laughs> it's one of my favorite things truth. to do. Um, Zach, I just wanted to say, because I was talking with Mark earlier, um, and apparently, you go out and hunt boar. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I do. Oh. It's the only way to keep them off the course. <laughs> awesome. So, so my kid really wants to hunt. So I'm going to bring him down here, and you can have him and take him hunting, and he'll shoot boar. Oh, perfect. We always need someone to chase in the brush after him when we wound one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've heard Mark, about that. <laughs> Mark told us not to do that. Uh, yeah, that's when they're most dangerous, and they will attack you. <laughs> All right. So Funny. note to self, he's not hunting with you. That's cool. <laughs> Um, and so we've got basically what two weeks left two to go? Half? Two and a half weeks? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, she's not counting anymore. It's like tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, so what are the last? I mean, we can see guys are still working hard out there. What are sort of the last little details you guys are having to take care of here to, to be ready to go? Uh, just finished throwing some sod, and they're out there setting the course now. So we just have to set that and flag the jumps, and we're getting there. That's you look awesome. you look incredibly relaxed. I'm not on the inside. <laughs> <laughs> so as we came in, like you said, I was here earlier. There's been a big transformation, and I know we're really excited about the, the rings and what you've done with the footing, but the course looks beautiful. I know there's been a lot of work by you and your family, Zach included, in getting the grounds lifted in the swamp area. It looks fantastic. And so um, your father's driving around. I hope we get to meet him. But it, this is a whole family affair, right? Yes, my dad's driving around here. My mom's in the show office setting everything up for the event. So well, good, good for. I mean, the family—they live in Bradenton, is that right? Yes. And um, so I'm from Bradenton. Well, my family is. So that's kind of cool. So oh, it's cool. like coming home. So awesome. we're excited. But tell us a little bit about the last challenges that you're going to have here. What do you What do you think? And I think you're set up for 300 horses in, in the barn area, and right yes. now we want to get that full, right? Yes, we'd love to get that Good. full. Good. So what are the last bit of challenges that you think you're going to have? The last bit of challenges for us is um, really knowing the numbers since it's our first event. Sure. So it's a lot of last minute adjusting to how many entries we get and you know, hoping for a lot of spectator spectators, but since it's the first one, it's hard to say. So just well, adjusting put, as we go. <laughs> I think put the signs out at the beaches. You can get all the boys out there. Just coming over. <laughs> so, so where are you at on entry numbers right now? Um, I believe we're getting close to a hundred. Okay. So, so it'll, it, believe me, we're last minute people. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it's, it's making, they will be coming in. I, I keep reminding myself that because I'm notorious for paying those late fees. So yeah, <laughs> definitely. I think there's a lot of things that happens in schedules too. A lot of people go into Morvin and, and to Fairhill, the Maryland five, and some things have to be rerouted And this, this definitely, you've got to strategically start planning that way. Yes. I think you're going to have a great event, and I know um, Sarah Murphy's been down here helping y'all a lot. Um, we're excited about the event. Great. We're excited to have you guys back. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, I think I would predict you're going to be more than double that by the time it all comes. Just having run events up in Ocala, they fill up um, at the end real fast. Hope so. <laughs> yeah, You'll be fine. And, and, and anybody who uh, is even debating it, I can tell you guys this place is absolutely incredible. It's going to be an awesome event. I have I think two entered right now I might go home and see if I can scrounge up a couple more because this looks like it's gonna and be a we, lot of fun. We beat John in entries I think we have one two three four. Awesome. So two in the four star and then of course Briggs and I are doing the two star which is perfect. Good. Well you'll yeah. have more opportunities to help our charities then on that, our teams. That'd so. be great. Yeah. yeah the charity thing is really cool so just really briefly just tell us about that because I saw that and I thought that was like what a good segue, Hannah. You did good. Yeah, good job. Well done. Um, I just thought not only was it incredibly inventive and kind of fun for everybody, but like just generally a very cool thing to do. Yeah, so that's um, been a big part from the start, how we wanted to incorporate that. And we brought on Anne Caroline Valton. Mm -hmm. um, she runs the Great Charity Challenge in Wellington. 
and so she's helped us structure the whole thing and going off of our goals for everything else at the event we really wanted to include everyone so you get to choose what charity you want to ride oh, for awesome. and it'll be equal numbers between the three so it's equal but um, all three team scores will get added together at the end and the charity that has the best score is going to win the money so it'll be really cool for some of the young riders and the kids to say you know I'm on a team with a four-star rider so and we can combine the the teams and do yes. it in there because obviously now I that I know that my father died of ALS so I'm going to definitely work on the charity for ALS so we're going to be a team for that and we're going to win it great <laughs> and so real briefly um what are the three charities and i know i saw them and i think everybody probably knows but just so everybody oh, hears we it. have to choose the charity a ALS well is we have not three almost. determined charities right. um so we vetted them all just to you know make sure that they're they're good they're good so okay. they're good um mm -hmm. so we have smart which is a therapeutic riding association locally good we have southeastern guide dogs which is a guide dog training facility we have here and then we have Meals on Wheels Plus, which provides meals um, and food to local food banks in the area. They're three great charities. Yeah, they're three fabulous charities. So well done, you guys, for doing that. Um, food, horses, food, horses, and dogs. You can't go wrong can't with that. Can't go wrong with that. <laughs> Especially yeah. food. Yeah, no, it, it's awesome. So listen, we really appreciate you letting us come out here and snoop around and um, taking the time to chat with us. And I can't wait to see you guys in about two and a half weeks. Great. Can't wait to see you back. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. All right. So now we are here with uh, Chris and Rob Decino. Guys, thanks for uh, stepping in here and joining us. And I know this is the first time that you've gotten to check out Terra Nova and sort of get a little tour of it. So um, what are your first thoughts when you sort of take a look at the took a look at the place? Um, I'm overwhelmed. I mean, the first thing I came today, I saw the barn and it's nicer than any barn in Wellington I've ever seen. Um, the amount of infrastructure, what they've done in such a short period of time is amazing. And I think it's just incredible to be able to have another facility like this to host horse shows in Florida, um, adding to the schedule. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I, obviously I was did of that. I was blown away by the barn and how beautiful it is, the tack room and whatnot. But then you go out to the ground and you know, just 18 months ago it was basically nothing and they raised the whole thing and they have beautiful turf. I, I asked Hannah if it was actually um, sod and she's like no mostly it's not it's just grown in they just had one of the best turf guys in the country here so absolutely if you're thinking about coming to that it's only two and a half hours down the road it's stunning beautiful I think don't they have the entire uh, cross-country course at least the four star is irrigated as well everything's irrigated I think they have guns on most of the front sides of the course and then the back side they have a system in which it rolls out the, the water guns system. Wow, yeah. I only wonder how many wells it probably takes to feed the guns. All of them. All of them. <laughs> <laughs> still one of them. Well, the machinery here is incredible. It's all brand new, beautiful stuff. So I think uh, if there's going to be any problems, they're going to be fixed right away because it's the, the other set of owners are always going to be listening and wanting to please. Well, Rob, I know, and Chris, y'all, this is, I mean, you do this as a business, right? I mean, you develop properties yeah. and coming in when you see the, the front gate and then, and then the fountain and then everything, you kind of appreciate what goes into this design, correct? Yeah, yeah. I mean, from the first time you pull in here, you see the beautiful horses and the beautiful waterfall, and you're like, it sets it down. Right. Like, okay, this is a quality facility. Absolutely. Yeah. I, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say, I know, just transitioning a little bit, you guys are also obviously huge supporters of the sport, and um, specifically Liz Halliday. Um, so you have- Sharp. Sorry, yeah, I know. Liz, Liz Halliday, Halliday Sharp. Sharp. I apologize, okay. good. But I was watching Hal uh, Halliday Sharp. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Al. <laughs> Yeah, you don't want Al on your bad side. No, probably not. <laughs> um, but to, to that point, you guys have obviously had a pretty exciting season. You know, some things that went incredibly well, and then some things, you know, that, as happens with all horses, um, didn't go quite to plan. But you have a pretty exciting trip coming up here, fingers crossed. Um, so where are you guys heading next? So we're headed to the Five Star in Po, which is over in France, if anybody doesn't know, which is the end of October. So we're really excited. We're taking our... Uh, our next young, young, oldest horse, Monster, uh, Cooley Quicksilver, over. Um, and he is such a beautiful horse and, um, you know, just a, a great athlete, so that's really exciting. So is he all set? Does he have another run before he goes? No, I think he just did um, Stable, View. Stable View this past weekend. Okay, finish so. fourth or fifth? Uh, I, think, I think eighth. Just, eighth? Uh, yeah, that's she all right. Didn't she had did. the best dressage score that she thought, well, yeah, scores could always be better. Subjective. And she had a really great uh, run around, so it's a... Uh, He's been around for a while and feels like he's 14, but he's only 10. He's still baby. He ran on the five-star Kentucky this year, did really well, had a little glance off, but I think we're uh, expecting good things from him this year. So what I always enjoy about seeing them travel 
and go to these horse shows. Y'all are there and you support and you're very deep into it, but you bring your significant others with you and you just make the best out of it. So what are you gonna do in France? Uh, we're going to uh, Monaco ahead of time. <laughs> oh, beforehand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, just get it here on the show. They're going to make it a fun trip. Right? Yeah, of course. We go ahead of time, and um, we love owning the horses. It's part of something that we can't do ourselves. So owning well, horses. you used to ride. Yeah, we used to, and I kind of sucked. So <laughs> <laughs> and all the horses went lame, and you take your wallet up. So, you know, I've had, I think, a couple horses on the way to um, – New Bolton and the side of the uh, road crying because I have another horse that's broken. So I just gave it up and, yeah. you know, luckily we had Liz who kind of pushed on us to get into ownership and we got lucky with De Niro Z. Um, but owning a horse, we try to go to all the events because you can pay for the bills and that's nice. But if you aren't watching what the horses are doing and like De Niro Z this past summer, you don't know when the horse might not be out for a while. Right. So we try to go to every single one of the events we can. With the training sessions and everything else, yeah. I think my last run was Rocking Horse, and this is when you could fall off more, you, can, you can't fall off anymore. No. I fell off once, got well, back can. on, you got back on, back fell off, off, and I'm sitting there in the, wa in the water uh, jump like this on all fours, I'm like, that horse, I'm gonna, well, first off, <laughs> I'm, I'm done with this sport, I'm too old and too tall for this, and I gotta make some money to pay for these things, so. So back to Monaco. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you're going to go to Monaco, do that, and then go go to Poe. Yeah, I think we're going to, um, Harry, my partner, is going to set, set up a, so not Harry's set the over entire there. trip. Yep. But we're going to take a week to get to Poe and then uh, stay in a nice hotel with uh, awesome. the other owner mar monsters, um, Renee and Jolaine. Debbie, Debbie uh, I'm sorry, uh, Liz's mom, Debbie, won't be there, but that's a monster group. So we have, we have a good time with each other. Well, it sounds like it's going to be a great trip, um, and I'm sure there'll be some wine and some cheese and baguettes in your future as well. So definitely wine and baguettes, right? Yeah, yeah of course. And so the other thing on Terra Nova, I know Hannah's sitting out in the audience. Y'all are really, really supportive in our sport, but you are also doing a support of a division, correct, here at Terra yeah. Nova? That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, um, one thing you have in Sarah here is she's obviously a great spokesperson for the whole sport. And look back at Kentucky this year, what she did saving yeah, that. Yeah, definitely. And, I can't see her but having successful results here too. So yeah, we're one of the uh, sponsors here as well. We're looking forward to it. And you know, it's only two and a half hours from Ocala, which is anything in Florida that's for an event or that's a short little trip. So we're looking forward to be coming and supporting those years, years coming forward. I think that's great. Yeah, that's great. Well, listen guys, good luck in France. Uh, we'll be cheering for Liz and for the whole team. And um, yeah, we'll see you on the TV watching your horse, I'm sure. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Thanks, All right. Uh, so thanks, everybody, for joining us for the John and Rick Show. We sure had a great time down here in Terra Nova, Rick. Yep, we did. And signing off from Mayaca City, Florida, at Terra Nova Equestrian Center. Thanks for being with us, and see you next time. Rick Wallace. And I have John Holland. Three phases, dressage, cross country, show jump, and you're out on course and something's going wrong or going right, you know how to react to what they're doing. It was built originally to be a schooling facility and so everything's set up very conveniently.